Hi class. Uh, I sent out a couple YouTubes that were older YouTubes. I want to reiterate that sometimes an older YouTube might have some references in it that are not appropriate. And I really apologize about the extremely hard um, unsaturation number I gave you and um, also the um, very hard nomenclature problem that was in there. I totally grasp the idea that you do not know how to do nomenclature yet. And sometimes I push ahead a little bit, but don't panic. If you feel like you're panicking, you're probably, you, pro you should probably just take a deep breath and say, no, she would not give us material that we have not covered yet. And I really won't. I won't give you material that we haven't covered yet. Okay, or I'll try not to anyway. But sometimes in these videos, there might be something on the edge that's not perfect. So what I'm going to do now are a couple of more middle level problems so that you can practice a little bit more. Okay, so for example, so one thing I said in class was that oxygen doesn't affect the unsaturation number. Um, so I'm talking about unsaturation number here. And um, so we want to see what happens when we put a nitrogen in or when we put a halogen in. And as I said in class, if you put a chlorine in, you know, if you start with a hydrogen and you have to put a halogen in, I'm a little stuck on chlorine, so I'll put bromine in. Okay, if I put a bromine in, that bromine or chlorine takes the place of a hydrogen. So in the saturated formula, you're going to have to adjust for that, which means you're going to have to subtract one for every hydrogen in the molecule. Okay? Um, similarly, if we consider uh, nitrogen, if I have methane, and again, why am I using methane? It's just the simplest saturated molecule. So if I have nitrogen, I have to add one for every nitrogen in the saturated formula. Okay? Now these effects are to the saturated formula, not to the unsaturated formula. That doesn't mean you can't have a double bond with N or a triple bond with N. Okay. So if you don't get why we're doing this, you will eventually, but the unsaturation number gives you information about structure. So say, for example, I have something C7H, I'm going to make it pretty unsaturated, N, um, O2, Br2. Like, say that's my formula. That is mighty unsaturated. Let's see. Maybe it's too hard. I don't know. Let's see. So how do you do this? This is the actual formula. And as I was saying before, the unsaturation number tells you something about the structure. It tells you that you have to have certain structural elements in the structure, such as you have to have a double bond, or you have to have a triple bond, or some combination. All right, so what is the actual, uh, the saturated formula? Now this may be too, this might be a mighty powerful problem here. Let's see. Okay. Let's see how unsaturated this thing is. So it's C7H, remember you do 2N plus 2. So it's 14 plus 2, it's 16. However, I need to adjust the formula for the nitrogen and the bromine. So this says nitrogen. Do I have to do anything for oxygen? No. And the bromine. So how do I adjust the formula? Well, for every nitrogen in the actual formula, I add one hydrogen to the saturated formula because that nitrogen has an extra link on it that has to be filled with hydrogen in the saturated formula. And remember, you only doctor the saturated formula, not the actual formula. The bromine, there are two of these bromines. So for every bromine, bromines like hydrogen, so it's going to take up the place of a hydrogen. So I have to subtract two out for the bromine. And that's going to bring me down to 15. Okay, so it's 16, 17, 15. Okay, so now what do I want to do? I want to subtract the actual formula, which is C7H7NO2, Br2. The difference is 8. This isn't too bad. And it gives an unsaturation number of 4, which is actually kind of a common unsaturation number. Now, there are different ways this problem can be approached. 
as one student was saying to me in my office today, she said, do I just write it and kind of make it work? Or do I write it and try to put particular functional groups in it? And you actually can do the problem either way. And I really believe with these kind of problems, you can direct yourself. You don't need a textbook to do these kinds of problems, okay? So first, kind, first way I'm gonna approach it is I'm gonna try to draw structures that have an unsaturation number of four and I'm just gonna make it work, okay? So this is making it work. I'm just gonna draw like two. You guys can take this further, maybe bring some to class tomorrow. I'll put something up on the board at the beginning and we'll practice a little bit. But um, it had, remember, the unsaturation number is 4. So what I have to do is draw a structure that's consistent with that formula. And what I want to do is avoid counting hydrogens. And I know that 4 means that it could be, for example, 4 double bonds. It could be 4 rings. It could be 2 triple bonds. It could be one ring plus three double bonds. Remember from class that each double bond in each ring is worth one unsaturation unit, or the loss of a pair of hydrogens, and each triple bond, and that doesn't matter whether it's with C or N, is worth the loss, it, it equals the loss of two hydrogens. Okay, so I'm going to draw the easy way out. Okay, what is the easy way out when you have four? The easy way out when you have four is to draw an aromatic ring. A benzene ring. And I'm going to draw a benzene ring with a nitrogen in it. Now, as I always tell students when they work in my office, if you're thinking a lot while you're doing this, you're probably thinking too much because I am not putting a lot of thought into this. Okay, this is like, again, first scenario, just make it work. Okay, so why, why is this going to take care of the unsaturation? Because it has three double bonds in one ring and that adds up to four. So what do I, what do I have left over? I've used up my N. I've got a C left, so maybe I'll do this. I'm just getting rid of my C, my O, my two O's. Oh, I can't do that. Tell me why I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that, right? So I can't do that. Why? Because I already used up my unsaturation. So there's one of my O's. I'll stick it over here. Um, what do I have left? Um, a BR. I, have, I, I really have to pack this thing full because it's really... Okay, so that should do it. That's, uh, oh, no, I got one more carbon. Okay, that should do it. That's just making it work. All right, how else could I make it work? Very easily, like, for example, I could make triple bonds. Um, so supposing I did this. Okay, I'm just going to put a C there so you can see it. How many carbons? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you zigzag these, I'm okay with that. All right, but I'm just going to be, I'm going to draw my triple bonds properly. <coughs> Excuse me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. One, two, three, four. That takes care of the unsaturation. All right, so what's left? I have two O's, so i got to get the O's in there. And this is like the quick and sloppy way to do this. Two O's, get them in. Bromines, get them in. Okay, just st st stuff those bromines in. Obviously, there's not a lot of space because this is highly unsaturated. So this is sort of like make it work. Realize oxygens can also be part of the backbone. They don't have to be on the periphery. So like, what about like make it work with rings? Like, I could make rings. This is make it work with rings. I can make rings that have oxygens in them, like that. What is that? That's an ether. Okay, I could make another ring i got to make a lot of rings. Make it work with rings means I've got to make smaller rings. So I think I'll go like this. Okay. And then maybe an N out here. I can use the N in a ring. All right. Um, well, how many carbons have I used? One, two, three. Wait. One, two, three, four. So I have a lot left, so I could go like maybe like that, something like that. That's four rings. I think, and then I got to slap a couple of bromines on there. Okay, that's make it work with all rings. Now that I'm just kind of shoving that together. All right, now supposing I took a different approach, I'm just going to show you an example. One example, and this is what we're going to do in class tomorrow. Okay, I still got the same formula. I still have the answer. Again, what does the unsaturation number tell you? It tells you how many rings, double bonds, and triple bonds you must put in the structure. It doesn't tell you what the exact structure is. It just like hones it into certain types of structures. So supposing I said you had to draw, and this is really good practice of functional groups, draw a structure consistent 
with the formula okay having okay let's see now we don't we have to add up to four so let's say we have a nitrile um, a ketone this is going to be tough let's see if we can do this an aldehyde oh better than that we can do better than this let's do an acyl halide because we have all these halides Um, an aldehyde and this is going to be tough Let's see if we can do it Ter uh, I don't make it tertiary that might be too hard secondary halide and what I mean by this an alkyl halide alright now this is <coughs> tougher because you have to fish into your brain and know exactly what these elements are so I'm going to start putting them down so if you're going to do this, this is like trying to put in specific functional groups that you've learned about. I say, okay, I can put a nitrile in. This is what a nitrile is. Okay, nitrile is a carbon triple bonded to an end. Now that takes care of an unsaturation of two. And what I suggest with these is that you get your business taken care of very quickly. Don't try to like push it in at the end. Put the functional groups in right away. So I'm going to put a carbon here because I need a little spacer. I'm going to put an acyl halide hanging off of here. So an acyl halide is a double bond O with, and in this case it would have to be bromine because this just has bromine in it. Now I've got an unsaturation of three. Now I'm going to put the aldehyde on. Maybe I'll give myself another carbon here. I'm going to draw an aldehyde there. An aldehyde is a carbonyl with an H on it. Okay, now how many carbons did I use? I've got, I got the nitrogen, the oxygens are gone. I've got one, two, three, four carbons, and I've got seven, so I've got a long way to go. So I could have made the tertiary. So I'm going to make my secondary halide right here. I get, I get all my business done right away. Then what I'm going to do is leave an H there so it's secondary. Again, what makes that a secondary halide? It's got two carbons attached to that carbon. All right, now, keep going. What have I got left? I, am, I, am, I have uh, diverted from using bond line notation just so you could see what I was doing with all the functional groups. So I've got one, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see if we've got everything. We've got an unsaturation of four. We've got both halides. We've got both oxygens. We've got the nitrogen. And we have seven carbons. Two, three, four, five. Oops. One. I keep forgetting that guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that works. Okay. Now notice what I did there. I got this stuff all in first before I ran out of carbons. Then I finished up with the balance. Okay. I'll see you in class tomorrow.